This is a short video on potential dividers, but before we talk about potential dividers, I just need to introduce two new symbols for two new parts of a circuit. This first symbol on the left, it means a variable resistor, which really just means a resistor with a resistance that can be changed to a number that we want. So basically we can control the resistance in that resistor and we can change it. The symbol on the right is for a potentiometer or a rheostat, that's another name for a potentiometer. A potentiometer is a resistor that we can attach a wire to at different parts, splitting it into two resistors with one part in series with the attached wire and the other in parallel with the attached wire. I'm going to show you some animations on what that looks like now. So if we have a potentiometer set up like this, you can see that there's a wire connected to the potentiometer itself to the resistor itself, and that arrow just shows you where it's connected specifically. This circuit here would behave like this circuit here with two non-potentiometer resistors. Basically what's happening is that wire is splitting the resistance in half, so that half of the resistance is experienced by a current in series and the other half is in parallel with that other resistor. So you can see that that's what's happening here. It's kind of just splitting the resistor in two. And because this is at the exact center, and I'm assuming that there's a uniform resistance throughout the potentiometer, the resistance of each individual part of the potentiometer would just be the total divided by two if we split that exactly in half. If we moved it up here to three quarters of the way up, it would look something like this, where the top part has a resistance of one fourth of the total and the bottom part has a resistance of three fourths of the total. If we move the wire all the way to the top, it would look like this. You can see that there's no longer any current going through the resistive part in series. It's all in parallel now. And if I brought it down here, all of it would just be in series. So we're now ready to talk about potential dividers themselves. A potential divider is any circuit arrangement that is designed to reduce the voltage by a certain fraction. In IB, potential divider problems just mean problems where you have to choose resistor values to give certain parts of the circuit specific voltages. So I'm going to do an example problem with that variable resistor. So our problem is that the light bulb in the circuit is designed to work at 9 volts. What resistance should we give the variable resistor to give the battery 9 volts? So it seems pretty simple. We've got a total voltage in the circuit of 21 volts and we want that light bulb to have a voltage of 9, so we need to figure out exactly how much resistance in that parallel resistor will give it a voltage of 9. So as with most physics problems, I'm not really going to try to visualize this. Instead, what I'm going to do is to just start writing down everything that I know about this problem. So first of all, I can come up with an equation for the equivalent resistance of the parallel resistors, and I'm going to be calling the variable resistor just R, that's the thing I'm trying to solve for in this problem. And when I combine these, I get the equivalent resistance is equal to this equation here. And that means that the equivalent resistance of the total circuit, because that parallel arrangement is in series with the 2 ohm resistor, this is what the equivalent resistance of the full circuit would be like, just the sum of those two resistances. I'm now going to bring this over here and continue to solve the problem. I know that the light bulb needs 9 volts, and because it's in parallel with the variable resistor, that means that the variable resistor is also going to receive 9 volts. And because this 9 volt drop is in series with the 2 ohm resistor, that means that those two voltages have to add together. 9 plus the voltage in the 2 ohm resistor has to equal 21. So that means that the voltage in the 2 ohm resistor is going to be 12 volts. And using V equals IR, I can find that the total current in the 2 ohm resistor is 6 amps. So again, I'm just starting to find information based on what I know. So that means that the total current in the circuit is 6 amps because it hasn't been split up yet when it gets to the 2 ohm resistor. And I can now make a connection between my equivalent resistance, my current, and my voltage because I know the total voltage, I know the total current, and I have an equation for the equivalent resistance. So this is what that looks like when I plug these in. And now I have an equation with just one variable r, so I'm going to be able to solve for r, which is the goal of this problem. I want to know what resistance that variable resistor should have. So just plugging this in using algebra, I get 2.4 ohms for the resistance of the variable resistor. So if we give the variable resistor that exact resistance, the light bulb is going to receive 9 volts of voltage. So that is how you do a potential divider problem. Again, a potential divider problem really just means trying to find an arrangement or a specific resistance that will cause another part of the circuit to experience the voltage that you would like it to have. The second example is using a potentiometer, and the questions about potentiometers don't get too complicated. So here this is just asking where can we set the potentiometer so, so, that, 
So here, this is just asking where can we set the potentiometer so that the light bulb receives the greatest voltage, and where can we set it so that it will receive the least voltage. So the place where the light bulb would experience the greatest voltage is where it would be in parallel with the potentiometer, because if it's in parallel, that would mean that both the potentiometer and the light bulb are receiving the full 18 volts from the battery. Whereas if they're in some form of series with each other, that means that they're going to be splitting up the voltage. So to make the light bulb in parallel with the potentiometer, we would need to put the line up here specifically. So in this case, the current can either go through the full potentiometer or through the light bulb like this. So this is the light bulb being perfectly in parallel with the full potentiometer. And the place where it would experience the least voltage is where we would put the potentiometer entirely in series with the light bulb. And what's happening here is that the light bulb is now in parallel with a part of the wire that doesn't have any resistance. So this part of the wire down here, the only part that's in parallel with the light bulb has zero resistance. And because resistance is voltage drop divided by current, that means that in this area, the voltage drop is also going to be zero. So there's no voltage drop across this wire, which means that there's also going to be no voltage in the light bulb either, which actually also means that there's no current in the light bulb because the light bulb does have a resistance. So if there is a resistance, but there's no voltage, no current can occur either. So the light bulb would experience the most voltage when it's in parallel with the full potentiometer, and it would experience the least voltage when it's just in parallel with that empty wire below the potentiometer.